Hey there, this is uh, to give you the 19th Sunday homily and just to put it on a separate tape. Uh, some people ask for that, so I'll do it. Um, 19th Sunday was Elijah in the cave and hearing God in the small whisper, not in the whirlwind, the fire, the earthquake, and all of that, but in something uh, quiet. Uh, Jesus goes up for some quiet in the gospel uh, where he goes up the mountain to pray. So that's the context of the word today. And, you know, when I was thinking of a homily, I was thinking of a comedian, Jim Gaffigan. And uh, he delivers his punchlines by whispering them. He says that whispering is an effective communication technique for him and and for others, when you want people to lean in and hear something or remember something or or get the the gist of what you're saying, he would so he would like give comedian uh, he would give comedic. Well, let me give you an example. The Washington Football Team they had a change from the Redskins. The owner still wanted the Redskins. He wants the burgundy and gold. What is he going to call the team? Maybe the Warriors. He thinks, but how about the Washington? potato skins see then they could be the uh the skin still right they could have mr potato head as the as the uh mascot and a lot of potato uh products sold in the and they could call the stadium the bushel and if they're having trouble getting a sponsor they could just get idaho potatoes or something right uh, and then there's the washington chameleons because if they can't win in burgundy and gold, they could switch to the colors of the other uh, team and maybe intercept the ball or confuse them and, and win a few. Uh, there's all these other names. The Washington Bigfoots, I thought. Uh, I don't know why. I just thought that would be a good name. Uh, I think my favorite classy name to them is the Washington Sentinels. But maybe it's too classy for a football team. All right, are we ready for the homily? Are we ready for the homily about secrets, about whispers? Why does God whisper some communication to us? Leading off our Sunday reading is Elijah, and there's all kinds of loud disturbances, but that is what gets his attention with God. It's a still, small voice, a gentle whisper. This is how he communicates with God in a needy time. He's up on that mountain hoping to reach God. This is how God reaches him. What is a, a whisper? The dictionary says it's to speak very softly without vocal cords, done especially for the sake of privacy. God whispers sometimes to get our attention, not in audible whispers, but communicating in a soft, gentle way. He started in the world by a gentle cooing of its babe in a cradle, something intentional and specific. God continues to be a little surprising like that. He whispers to the waiting Elijah. He does it for the very purpose of having Elijah pause for him and lean in closer to him. A whisper communicates intimacy with the other. You need to be close and quieted and focused while in a whisper exchange. God wants to be personal with us. And to be personal, a whisper works at that. You know, there's a lot of noise in the world. And yet a lot of people try to get the attention by all kinds of clamor. God can do that if he wants. Um, but sometimes he doesn't. He communicates with Elijah with the whisper, maybe he does more than we know to us, but in the past, our noise, our multiple distractions have um, caused him and his messages to get drowned out by our own constant din. But what's going on now in this COVID-19 time? Can God get through his, to his people now? Are they listening? Psalm 45, be still and know that I am God. The writer of old, John Donne, once lamented about his own poor, distracted prayer life. He said, I neglect God and his angels for the noise of a fly. What do we get distracted for? The noise of a phone's vibration tone or the clamor of a political campaign or, or what else? 
the sports games that are being played right now, interestingly, they're putting in fake noise and cheers to fill the quiet. I say, though, in our COVID experience, listen in to the quiet. Don't fill in with fake noise and distractions. You need these opportunities to hear God. Now, not everybody is totally uh, slowed down and stopped. There are some people busier than ever or have kids and noise. Okay, then you're longing for this same thing to hear God. But so many times in the past, we've had our veiled excuses that we're, you know, we're too busy. But really what it was is we were too uncomfortable to quiet. But God is now saying, Lisper up. Listen up to the whispers of God. Human hearing goes from about 85 hertz to 2500 hertz, so I'm told, the human ear. But there's infrasonic sound, the kind that they use with scientific instruments to, to hear things, to know like if a volcanic eruption or earthquake is coming, even far off. And nobody else can tell. Sometimes nature hears these things, right, before we do. Ultrasonic sound, it's, uh, now they can detect the newborn and the heartbeat of, of, a, of an embryonic child life uh, with a new heartbeat going. These are things that can't normally be heard by human beings, but they are real sounds, aren't they? And God wants us to hear also off the range, off the regular hearing range, and he wants us to let our souls pick up communication. He wants our eyes to be able to help our, our minds, our consciences to hear. Uh, he wants us to interpret the things going on right now in our lives as messages from him. Of course, we have our scriptures and we have the saints and we have some traditional ways too of, of paying attention to God and listening in from the heart with a renewed mind, with the humble soul. Prayer and faith and obedient listening is the kind that we really need to exercise. We can't just settle for just the, the human listening, although we have to work at that too, don't we? We human beings aren't very good at listening just normally. But we are made for God and we're made to communicate to God and we're made to live a whole life, body and soul. And God would like to see that start happening in our life more and more. And so like Elijah did, let us, not be afraid to draw near to the presence of God so as to obey him. Listening is, is, implies obedience, that we'll trust the will of God that he's trying to reveal so we can live in it and then find our fulfillment in what God speaks. So, you know, I was thinking of somebody who has heard something during this uh, the last four months. He's heard that God wants him to start interceding and praying for others. So he does it right outside here in the parking lot, an hour a day, praying with the tabernacle in view, praying for, for all of us to get through this time. And there's a lot more to what's going on that just meets the eye or the ear. I was thinking of the Carmelites when we did our uh, prayers to Our Lady of the Snows in Oviedo, thinking of the Carmels and how they went up to that same cave of Elijah to begin their religious community and helped with Our Lady of Mount Carmel. They have learned to, as our Psalm Alleluia verse says today, to wait and listen to God's word. The Carmelites are especially fond of listening to God's whispers. But we all have to have a little Carmel in ourselves. So we go back to Jim Gaffigan and he says, you know, I whisper because I, I can get across the, the funny thing I want to say. Well, God also wants to say something, maybe not so funny, um, but he wants to say that he loves us and he's with us as we go through these current things. And uh, speaking of that, I, I know there's a book that uh, came out called I Heard God Laugh by Matthew Kelly. I just started reading it. And I think I'm going to uh, use it as a tool for the parish to get that book. If we uh, have hundreds of people uh, read that book, I can get it for a dollar each. And I think I'm going to use that. I heard God laugh. If we learn anything through these months that we're going through, it should be to, to learn to pray and to learn to know the God who whispers. God be with you.